it's very important to look at the width as well as the rigidity of BFR cuffs when examining different devices. If we look at B-Strong's band, you can see that it's very narrow and flexible. You can see if I twist this, I'm able to have a lot of give uh, to this system. Now when we look at Saga Fitness, this one is a little bit wider, so if I lay it over the B-Strong band, we do have some more width to the cuff and it is also a little bit more rigid. So when we open this up and we try to twist here, you can see that it doesn't quite bend as easily. Now this is important for the design of this system because this system does need to have the ability to occlude to determine a safe BFR training pressure. The wider the cuff is, the easier it is to occlude and it takes less pressure to do so. So in our previous examples when we were pumping this cuff up you can see that it takes less than 200 millimeters of mercury for us to lose a pulse. That's the importance of having a wider rigid system is we're able to reach that point of occlusion at lower pressures. Now with something like Be Strong we take advantage of the width of the cuff as well as the elastic properties to create a very high ceiling for us to have the ability to occlude. So with this band we can pump it up to 500 millimeters as I've shown previously and we still maintain a pulse into the limb. So it's important to understand the differences in, as I've mentioned, the width of the cuff as well as the properties of it being very elastic or rigid. As an example I'm going to show you what happens to specifically the heart rate when we use a wide rigid system at the legs compared to a narrow elastic system. All right, let's take a look at what happened when setting up a standardized bike test comparing two different BFR band types. Be strong, narrow and more flexible. Saga Fitness, wider and more rigid. Not the widest on the market, but definitely wider and more rigid than Be Strong. I jumped on a Kaiser spin bike for 15 minutes set the resistance level at 12, and tried to maintain 75 revolutions per minute throughout the duration of the ride. I performed the test on two separate days, but they were both performed in the evening, so the same time of day. I was hooked up to a Polar H10 heart rate monitor, and I used Garmin Connect's app to collect the data that I'm going to show you. A couple more items, pressure on Saga bands. 60% of limb occlusion pressure, 169 millimeters of mercury. B strong bands, I was into the blue bands, pumped up to 300 millimeters of mercury. What happened? On the left hand side, we've got the Saga bike test. As you'll see, the average heart rate was 103 beats per minute. When we did the same test with B strong, we were at 95 beats per minute. So, Saga took the heart rate up about eight more beats per minute on average throughout the duration of the test. We also recorded the maximum heart rate was 116 with Saga compared to 104 with Be Strong. It's about a 12 beat per minute increase there as well. So what can we learn or what can we take away from this? Inherently, a wider, more rigid BFR band is going to cause the heart rate to increase a greater degree with exercise of the same intensity compared to a narrow, more flexible band. Now there are other factors that can be manipulated, such as resistance or band pressures, but inherently it's important to understand the design of the cuff has an influence on the heart rate's response to exercise.